Dear Mother, I know you probably thought you'd never hear from me, but here we are. The skeleton that mustered up the strength to walk out of your closet and face you, mother to son, I'm not here to disturb your peace. I just have a few questions I need to wash off my bones. I always wondered when you were far away if ever we prayed to God at the same time. And which of our prayers did he put on hold for so long? It felt like you were my missing guardian angel that grinded my prayers into dust and snorted my blessings through your halo, my brothers told me that we were to view you like God. Even though we couldn't see you, feel you, or prove your existence, that we should still love you. On that day, on that day, I closed the Bible and practiced religiously the art of hating you and everything you left behind, including myself. I've caused me so much damage. I still sometimes get triggered by the sound of my own voice. You see, my pain never went away. I just hid it behind the moon, and I've been howling at it ever since. The wolf that wrapped himself in sheepskin so that I might cry like a lamb, I remember. Your pictures hanging in my room like a ghost to its grave. Staring at your photos, at the eyes and smile that you stole from me before I ever had the chance to give it back. So I became the beast that ate its own insides empty and devoured women that just looked just like you just give birth to their smiles and kiss that newborn lips goodbye. This was how you taught me to love. All selfish and broken pieces. They say the body is made of 80% water. So crying must be a form of communion or suicide. Either way, I bled you a new sunrise. A new day. Another sunrise. Another prayer slipping down my simian lines. I should hate you for everything that you are, but here I am madly in love with you for everything that you weren't. And I'm not here to disturb your feast. The skeleton that walked out of your closet just to polish his bones into beautiful ornaments. Sincerely yours, the boy that had to spend his first 21 years of life without you. Well. So um, not only do I do poetry, I'm also a slam poet, and um, not a lot of people like slam. I love it because I'm competitive as fuck, and I just really like pushing myself, and iron sharpens iron, and I enjoy it. So they have a competition every year in Dallas. It's called um, Poetry versus Hip Hop, where they take a poet and a rapper, and they put them on stage, they give a poet a chance to do like a two minute poem and they let a rapper do an entire song with instrumentals and everything. <laughs> I get to talk shit to somebody that don't think I got it, I gotta talk my shit, is that okay? Yeah. 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 I'm gonna move the mic, because for theatrical effects, I guess. Let's go. So ever since I was a kid, all I wanted to be was a poetic lyricist. I had dreams of my pen transforming into a paintbrush or a magic wand. I then become a master magician, manipulating matter out of misery, making memorable moments manifest instead of meaningless small and mildew mumble or meritless smiles or mediocre magicians who I make my music. See, the trick is allowing your mind to become limitless, creating an entire universe from discarded words and broken sentences. I gather stars, place them underneath my tongue, then spit out constellations. The Big Dipper, the Northern Star, wedged in between my teeth. I free slave when I speak. What I mean is poetry is the galaxy's favorite form of speech. I smoke science, snort philosophy, geology, Greek mythology. Not even Thor could have a home to Iron Man if you gave him the Hulk end of the stick using bold words that put all caps in America. I'm an angry black man utilizing his voice. I Caps in America to revert back into hysteria. You know the skit row kid that made schizos cringe. I'm the love child of Maya Angelou in the 18th letter I came. This is literally lyrically creme de la creme. Nah, nah, nah. This, this, this is God, son. Like Jesus wearing gems, removing his limbs just to showcase his body of art. I don't spit, I vomit, I bark out agony, tragedies. My palm writes through the lens of Othello's hindsight. Ooh. Now that's 1080p HD clarity, so you can see my pain pillaging through pages, drenched in tears and hollow hollers hanging in inhibited halls of heaven's gateways. See, poetry needs nothing but the rhythm of God's heartbeat. Okay, so poets, I'm starting to think that we're doing it wrong. 
See, we recite on stage, but the trap house is where we should be pushing these poems, depending on how the fiends want to high. We can sell it by the pound or move it by the line, take pieces of our broken emotions, stuff them in dime bags, turn with zigzags, and let you smoke them, nigga. This shit right here, this shit right here, it's called life. One puff in your ass to start living it. Or you might find inspiration to start your own damn business, man. This shit right here is not for the faint of heart. This is grown fucking business. We poets become Basquiat. Painting suicide on the belly of cumulus clouds, waiting on acid rain to dissolve a decade of decadency depicted by false lyricists who don't take this stress, who don't take this crap serious. If you don't bleed it, I don't believe it. Period. I'm just trying to break the cycle of an anxious menstrual. Wait, see what I did there? Bleed it. Period. Cycle menstrual. I give you the four to five days to think about it. Give me seven. Now write Earth in the image of heaven. Become the ghost of Malcolm X, pivoting like Muhammad Ali while rigging a chainsaw. I would literally eat the chains off then come back next week just to do it all over again. I tell rappers that this is a battle of lyricists. Who they really expect to win. Yeah. I'm like pressured into right now. Like that's really not my style of poetry. But you know. You can't just let them call you out. You sometimes you gotta educate. Sometimes, sometimes, you know. I do one more. Okay, this is a short one. Loving my father made me southpaw ambidextrous. Fighting for his love with my right, defending his absence with my left, my mother caught his hook with no ring to step in. So it was no match. Only an exhibitionist who swore himself a holy field of sugar rays just to a rope it up her love later on the map with no glove knocked her up, then out he left before the 10 second count. Said he may weather the storm of fatherhood, but my birth made him spring, made me a hangover to his punch drunk love affair, shadow boxing with his presence, cause his heart hit a running target, so I knuck it up. Chose not to be a punching bag to his absence. So when my children made it to the ring, I would be there to spar with their affection, show them how to sidestep, pivot past bruisers, whose only title is removing their belts. I'll show them exactly what undisputed looks like. So when their children enter the ring, they will never throw in the towel. They will know to fight for what they love. They will be champion fighters and lovers. Thank you. Yeah.